Hey guys, Stephen here from Tech Testers, and today we'll be taking a look at the Division 2. Primarily for those of you who are looking to upgrade their GPU for this game, we're going to answer the question of which one you want to get for each resolution. We'll also take a look at CPU performance, and I do want to talk about the game a bit first if you're still on the fence of buying it. But don't worry, I'll put some timestamps down below if you're interested in only skipping to certain parts. This video was brought to you by MSI, who was kind enough to supply us with a complete GPU lineup so we can test games extensively. Whether you're looking for the addressable RGB overload of the gaming Z models or prefer the black, white, monochrome taste of the armor models, MSI has you covered. Learn more using the links below. Now at this point, The Division 2 probably doesn't need much of an introduction. Fans of the series are already max level and grinding the nights away for those gear upgrades, and the first Division game is old enough that I expect most gamers to have a basic clue of what it's about. Now, if you've absolutely never heard of The Division, you basically play an urban version of Rambo where you shoot a whole lot of bad people with an insane amount of different guns and an even more insane amount of ammunition. Because for some mysterious reason, your humanoid enemies in this game require several shots to the head before they go down. Now, there is a story in there somewhere as well about a virus and some cool orange watches and you being the new sheriff in town, but for the most part, you kind of ignore that and you just kill more baddies to get more guns to kill more baddies, all while looking increasingly badass as you level up. Level up enough and you end up shooting some online folk instead of NPCs, which again will give you better guns and gadgets. Now jokes aside, in most ways the second game is very similar to its predecessor, making it very easy to tell whether you should buy it or not. If you love the first, you'll love the second more as Ubisoft has really improved on some things that improve the general quality of life and the fun you're having. However, if you really hated the first game, I don't think you'll suddenly start loving the second. There's definitely a lot of improvements to the overall gameplay, and obviously the game looks a whole lot better now and sounds a whole lot better um, as well. But at its core, it's that same running from cover to cover, looter shooter that has you go through endless waves of spawning enemies with their ridiculous amounts of health. And I personally would have preferred the Ghost Recon Wildlands approach, where you have a fixed amount of enemies that you can professionally dispatch using stealth and accurate one shot sniping. But The Division 2 stays true to the success of the original, which is not really a surprise by simply having you unload entire clips into someone's face, with bosses in particular often eager to take hundreds of bullets before going down. Now, realism is far to be found, but admittedly it does make killing bosses a very rewarding experience and ultimately more fun. Now, don't get me wrong though, we're really enjoying playing this as a co-op experience. I'm not sure if it's much of a solo experience, but it is, well, we're having a good time. Don't expect too much of a gripping story either, but at least it doesn't have you spam that escape button to get the heck out of the conversations like we had with Anthem, which was quite frankly terrible when it came to the story. This does have the Diablo-ish grind till you get it endgame, that's not going to be for everyone, but The Division knows damn well what kind of game it wants to be and does that well by not letting unnecessary story elements get in the way of what you ultimately want to be doing here, and that is to shoot things. And there are a lot of things to do in the game. Yes, they all include shooting something, but there's plenty of tough challenges to keep you on your toes whether you're a casual gamer or a Division fan. Even for those of us who are not going to have time to get into the endgame grinds like ourselves, but you just want to enjoy the main quest and a couple of sides, you're still talking about dozens of hours of gameplay, so I don't think it's a bad value deal even from a casual point of view. Now let's talk about performance, and there is some very good news, because The Division 2 is not extremely hard to run on your GPU or on your CPU, with it generally being playable even on lower end hardware if you are willing to sacrifice on quality. Now even though the ultra graphics preset really does impress, there's a ton of detail, the game looks great, but even on medium settings it's a very good looking, very attractive game. Now at some point after testing some things on a fairly high power rig I had completely forgotten I had actually set it to medium for several days, so I don't think you should feel that sad if you don't have the money to buy an expensive video card that you will need for the highest graphics settings. They also include a ton of options to actually tune the graphics and performance to the way you like, so that's a really good thing depending on what you find important. And it is important to note that, as we've seen before with Ubisoft games, HDR support is present and well implemented, and I'm really glad they're making a habit of that, as HDR is becoming more standard these days. Now, as we've seen before with both The Division and other Ubisoft games, this game also includes a built-in benchmark. Now, that's not a perfect representation of actual gameplay, when we look at performance of the moments that we really care about, and those are the ones filled with action or fighting a boss, but it actually does give you a pretty good idea of what to expect. Mid-action, the average frame rate in-game is actually typically higher than the built-in benchmark, but as expected, the 1% lows that are quite important as well are generally a fair bit lower. Take the RTX 2080 on 1440p Ultra, for example, the benchmark would give you a score of 85 FPS on average, but in gameplay we'd actually be closer to 95 fps with 1% lows being in the area of 65 fps. 
So that makes it a pretty good place to set our baseline performance, especially since the benchmark also turned out to be quite consistent when comparing between different GPU models within one brand, as well as when comparing AMD to Nvidia. So let's take a look at those results first before we move on to the actual recommendations based on the gameplay FPS. Now looking at these graphs and starting with the popular 1080p or Full HD resolution, it is clear that even the cheapest GPU you consider buying new today, the AMD RX 570, has a comfortable time playing this game smoothly if you are okay with medium settings, which I think you should be. Now, if you insist on ultra settings on 1080p, you'll be looking at something like a GTX 1660 Ti, which is not really that extreme as far as demands go. Now, for the most part, we don't really see any surprises either when it comes to individual card performance, as well as when we look at the typical AMD versus NVIDIA, Nvidia battle with most cards relative performance being roughly where we'd expect them to be based on previous game performance tests. Now, looking at 1440p, as is typical, AMD starts doing a little bit better from a relative point of view, with the RX 580 getting comfortably ahead of the GTX 1060. Unfortunately for AMD, however, Nvidia's new GTX 1660 does close that gap, so that's a bit of a shame for them. Similarly, with the RTX 2060 and Vega 56 at similar price points currently, it does look like Nvidia does remain the stronger choice if you are looking to buy a new card for this game specifically. Still, it's good to see that you can actually play this game at 1440p comfortably, even with a current mid-range GPU on medium settings from either Nvidia or AMD. At 4K, however, the extra pixels do start taking their toll on basically any graphics card, with only the RTX 2080 Ti staying above that magical 60 FPS average on Ultra, and even for medium, you're looking at something like a GTX 1080 Ti or RTX 2080. So this just kind of goes as a reminder that 1440p 144Hz monitors is what personally I think you want to look at if you're looking for a gaming experience that combines quality with performance. I think we are slowly getting to the point where 4k gaming becomes a bit more of a serious thing but right now it is basically just for those that have an endless amount of money to spare both on their monitor as well as their graphics card. But now let's get to the point of what I think you should do instead. Sure medium is acceptable and ultra looks absolutely great and ultimately what looks good is a very subjective thing, but thankfully uh, Ubisoft offers plenty of options so you can tweak to your own liking. Personally, I do think that most gamers will pick a graphics preset and expect it to work, so I did want to focus on that. So I actually concluded that high is a very good option to aim for because it has improved performance over ultra, but ultimately little to no impact on your actual visual experience in this game. Honestly, if I didn't know what to look for, I don't think I'd be able to tell you the difference between ultra and high settings. So to me, it makes the most sense. So for those of you who are actually looking to buy a new GPU with this game in mind, we want to aim at those high settings and we want to aim at 60 FPS constantly with 1% lows being no lower than 55. That is a good place to start because then you'll have a smooth experience, which is vital if you're serious about shooters and you still get to combine it with pretty visuals. Technically, we could lower the bar a little bit, but when you're buying a GPU, you do so for a couple of years, and I don't want to recommend getting you a card that's only just good enough for your expectations today. Now, to get that standard of high 60 plus FPS average and 55 FPS 1% lows or higher, you will want to look at a GeForce GTX 1660, like the MSI GeForce GTX 1660 Armor OC that we're using in this test. Now the AMD RX 580 just doesn't make the 1% lows we were aiming for. It's not bad by any standard, but it's not quite as good. If you're an AMD fan and you want to go for that, that kind of makes sense. You can tweak a setting or two, but unfortunately for you, we'll have to admit that Nvidia simply has a slight edge in this game. Now to get a similar performance on 1440p, you will want to look at an RTX 2060 like the MSI RTX 2060 Gaming Z we have. Now, if you do want to play all the latest games in good settings, I do still think that the RTX 2070 is what you want to look at for this resolution, but for the Division 2 in particular, the RTX 2060 does the job really well. Now, this is going to start repeating a little bit because AMD is just slightly behind here with the Vega 56 and 64 just not meeting the 1% low requirements we set. They're pretty close, it's a pretty smooth experience, and if you are an AMD fan, you can cover this by tuning some of the settings. But overall, if you're looking to buy a new card for this game, it is a pretty tough sale next to the NVIDIA RTX cards currently. Now, as for 4K, the RTX 2080 Ti is where it's at if you do want that high or better experience, like the MSI GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio we used, which is a beast of a card, by the way. And sure, some slightly cheaper cards can pull this on medium, but as I said, 4K is incredibly difficult to drive. So if you insist on 4K gaming, prepare to spend a lot of money on your GPU. 
Now for the ultra wide fans out there, we usually don't include ultra wide benchmarks because it takes an, a lot of extra work, but we did want to test with a couple of cards specifically to see what we need to get to get a similar experience on 3440 by 1440p, because this game actually has great ultra wide support. Now, if that's what you're looking for, it is the RTX 2080 you want, like the RTX 2080 Duke from Amazade we used for this test to get that very smooth experience on high. You can get pretty close with a 2070, but to be honest, it's kind of hard to recommend a 2070 at this point if that's the resolution of your monitor and you're serious about gaming. Now, let's move on to CPU performance impact. So what we did is we took our Intel Core i9-9900K and we set it to various core counts and clock speeds. Now, we did not see any performance loss even dropping down to 6 cores, 6 threads, 4.5 gigahertz, which means that Division 2 runs equally well on a Core i5-9600K as it does on a Core i9-9900K, and that's pretty good news. More impressive is that they've actually done a great job optimizing this game for different CPUs, because as we start scaling the CPU down even more, we can see this game is able to benefit from cores and clock speeds fairly equally. This means that if you go the AMD route for your CPU, and I know a lot of you will because Ryzen makes a ton of sense right now, the extra cores will easily make up for slightly lower clock speeds. Overclocking will still be worth it, but overall it's fair to say that even with a low core count or low clock speed CPU, you will be able to play this game quite comfortably. Now, as expected, CPU performance becomes less of an issue at higher resolutions with even something like a Core i5-8400 or Ryzen 5 2600. Your overall gameplay experience on 1440p shouldn't be that much worse than when you're gaming on a fast i7 or i9. Now at 4K especially, we can even limit it down to two cores, four threads, and not see a performance loss compared to an i9 in full force. I don't really think I'm going to recommend a weak CPU when you're already looking at the RTX 2080 Ti, but it just kind of proves the point that optimization here is pretty solid and CPU bottlenecks are not a significant concern. Anyway, that's it for me for today. I'll summarize my GPU recommendations in the description for an easy summary. Let me know what kind of game you think I should cover next. Don't forget to subscribe to see more and see you in the next one.